If you remember, a few months ago I bought a random cosplay online and I got Junjin. I was very happy about it, but I did have a little problem. It does not close. Welcome to Cosplayland, I am Alias and in this video I am going to show you how to fix a cosplay that does not fit and how I also added some extra details to make it look how I want it. I knew exactly what I did not like about my cosplay, so I went ahead and made a list of all the things I wanted to change. Step number one. I need to make my cosplay bigger because it does not fit. So I will need to modify the dress and the corset so they fit me because right now it's impossible to close them and I cannot even wear it. Step number two. I want to add more details because yes, more is more and this ugly finishing on some of these parts make your cosplay look cheap and that's the last thing you want in a cosplay. And step number three some puffiness. I think the best word to describe this cosplay is deflated, so I will be adding some structure and fixing some of the undergarments so you can see this cosplay in all its glory because I actually think it's beautiful, it just needs a little bit of love. With everything planned, it is time to start crafting. And of course I lied, I am actually not starting with step one, because I am a cosplayer and I do not do things in the correct order, deal with it. The first thing I actually did was to add some dimension to the cloak, I think these lines are ugly, so ugly, so I just used some embroidery floss to add some dimension to the cloak and make it look more as a handmade thing, I don't know, it's obviously very easy and takes no time at all, like, no time. While I was at it, I also decided to add some extra texture to the cord pieces on the dress. I honestly don't know why I didn't use cord. Well, I guess it is more difficult to sew cord than it is to sew whatever this is, but making your own loops with a bit of hot glue is actually quite easy, so I decided to change all of the loops for the ones I made and I simply sewed them on top just to get a little bit of the structure at the back and that way they stayed in place. As I was in the mood for sewing, I also decided to reinforce each one of the pink knots on the dress. Why are they like this? This looks like a sweater, but doesn't matter. They work, they are the right color, I guess it's fine. If I had been bothered, I would have changed them all for real cord, but just a few stitches to keep them up is enough to make them look better. Finally, nothing says more store-bought cosplay than fake lace. It's so terrible. So I decided to sew a piece of trim to the hat and now it just looks perfect, like no one will notice. Oh, and also a word of advice. The hot glue that they use on this cosplay is absolute garbage, like the pieces kept falling off. So make sure you test all your pieces and glue them again with some better glues because I guarantee they are going to fall off. But you know what did not fail me? My Moco Queen contact lenses. I have been wearing this brand for quite a while and they have the most comfortable lenses I have tried. They also have next day delivery to the US and will also ship to Europe, so I can make sure I always have my contact lenses ready in time for my conventions. For my Junjin cosplay, I decided once again to wear my red brown Zoe contacts because I think they look super good and they are a compromise between realistic and fantasy, but they also have a great collection of lenses that make your eyes look like anime characters which I really love and I want to try for this cosplay as well. Don't forget to use the code ALICECOS for a 10% discount, I will leave you a link in the description so you can get them. Thank you so much Moko Queen for sponsoring this video and now let's move on to the next step. 
This is the main event. I am going to fix this cosplay and I'm gonna make it work. As you see, there is indeed quite a gap at the back, so first things first, I measured the gap of the opening just to see how much fabric I needed to add to the gap. The right way to do this would be to unpick the sides and sew it again, but very close to the edge so you can get a few extra centimeters. Unfortunately, there's no way I can do it with such a big gap, so let's just use cosplayer's plan B. I cut a piece of fabric as wide as the gap, plus the seam allowances, and I attached a zipper in the middle. Then I place the new piece on top of the gap, the gap gets narrower at the top and you may want to pin it before you commit. Try and adjust as many times as you need. Finally, I simply top stitched my new panel in place and made it look like it was intentional, of course. The best part is this is a Genshin Impact cosplay, there are so many details no one will notice. Plus, it will be hidden by the cloak and the wig, so no big deal. The corset part only needed to be an actual corset, so I simply added a few grommets and cords and it was ready to be worn. And this is also another way in which you can make your garments bigger without having to worry so much about how they're gonna fit, because you can just adjust them with the cord. With everything fixed, it was time to add some puff. I noticed my hat was too floppy, so I added some boning to the top to help it keep its shape. And underneath the dress, I opted to use my short petticoat to add a little volume. Because it's detachable, I can use it for several cosplays, so I don't have to worry about making a new one each time. I actually have a video and patterns to make these petticoats and the bloomers, so make sure to check it out if you are interested. And now, the most crucial step if you bought your cosplay. You need to iron it. No, honestly iron your cosplay. It came all the way from China in a tiny, tiny, tiny little bag and it's not gonna look good. So yeah, I don't know what you expected. You need to iron your cosplays. You actually have to iron your cosplay even if you make your cosplay. If you don't iron your cosplay, dishonor on your family, dishonor on you and dishonor on your cow. Just do it, okay? Just trust me. Some final details, and I just needed to style an old wig into Junjin's hairstyle by adding this extra bit of hair that I got super cheap on AliExpress. And at last, my Junjin cosplay is finally ready for the lantern rite.
and this is how the cosplay looks from the back. I told you, it's not even noticeable with the capelets and the hair. And the petticoat and bloomers added just enough extra poof to make the skirt fuller. Actually, if you want to see more photos of this cosplay, you can see the whole process for free on my Patreon, as this was part of my free January initiative in which I release all the content for the month for free to all my followers, including the free members. Last month, my followers got a 20 page ebook for free just for being there, even the free members. And I will be sharing more freebies in the future, so make sure to check it out if you're interested. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will be seeing you in the next adventure. Bye! No, snakes in the grass. Snakes in the grass everywhere. No, Hollywood! <laughs>